Carter, who's a political commentator at the Sunday Herald. He joins me now from our Edinburgh studio. Uh, give us a bit of an overview on this then, Ian. Well, um, it is extraordinarily damaging, clearly, for Labour. This is the second Scottish Labour leader who has resigned over irregularities in their expenses. Um, the former First Minister, Henry McLeish, uh, resigned back in 2001 over uh, multiple sublets to his constituency office. And now Wendy Alexander has gone over, essentially, a series of donations which were made um, covertly to her campaign fund, uh, a campaign which actually never took place because she was in the end elected unopposed. That's one of the many ironies of the situation. But she, she, she gathered these um, uh, funds from a number of sources, including uh, foreign businessmen who actually did not have the right uh, to vote in UK elections, and therefore some of these were technically illegal. Now, certainly that, that is the background to what has happened here. Wendy Alexander and Labour are saying that this has been, there have been political machinations here, um, that this has been the result of a, a stitch up by the SNP. But the problem is that this has actually been going through the correct parliamentary channels. What happened was that the Standards Commissioner, Jim Dyer, recommended action against Wendy Alexander for her failure, failure to declare those donations. This was put to, to the uh, committee, the Standards Committee, which as we know, though split, in the end decided that she should have a token sanction or one day suspension. Um, now, I think members of that committee didn't believe that this would force Wendy Alexander to resign. In fact, the SNP were quite happy to have Wendy Alexander remaining in office. She would be the first uh, serving leader uh, in history uh, to uh, be in a legislature where, from which she is, uh, they have been suspended. So this isn't, ex isn't exactly the outcome the SNP were intending, um, but uh, it is a very damaging situation nevertheless for Labour. What, what does it mean for Labour, though, in Scotland? Well, it, it means a, a, a big black hole, I'm afraid, because Wendy Alexander was their best hope, I believe, of, of trying to move in a different direction. Wendy Alexander, you may remember, she made this dramatic uh, declaration that she supported a referendum on independence in Scotland. Indeed, that if, uh, if the SNP didn't come on with their referendum on independence, she would move on herself. She has been trying to uh, move uh, Labour in Scotland in a more nationalist, with a small n, a nationalist direction. She set up the Common Commission to campaign for more powers for the Scottish Parliament. Um, and uh, she, as I say, she has been attempting to make Labour's posture in Scotland be much more pro-Scottish, much more pro-autonomy. Almost a federalist party is what she's been looking at. Now, there were people in her own ranks who were clearly unhappy with that, and that may be some of the background to this. Uh, one final point, uh, which is worth mentioning, that though the complaints to the Standards Commissioner on these questions, on these campaign funds, which, which weren't properly declared in time, though the complaints came from the SNP, they were the result of stories which were run in the Sunday Herald uh, with uh, details about Wendy Alexander's fundraising, which could only have come from people very close to Wendy Alexander herself. So as the Labour Party in Scotland tries to pick up the pieces and find some future leaders to take on from Wendy Alexander, they must know that internally they are extremely divided and will remain so. Is this the end of Wendy Alexander's political career? Um, yes, this is the second time she's resigned actually. She was a minister in, uh, um, in the early uh, years of this, this decade, in 2001. She resigned then after some uh, heated exchanges with some of her civil servants and uh, complaints from a number of the people working around her that she was uh, a difficult and explosive uh, character. Um, you know, so some of us suspected that in the end this might be what would happen, that Wendy Alexander would not be pushed out of the job, but she would uh, resign herself. And we've seen this has obviously been clearly been a very emotional experience for all concerned. And we saw there um, Cathy Jimison, the deputy leader of the Scottish Party, who is now going to take over from Wendy Alexander and possibly may continue because she has put in some fairly uh, competent and effective uh, performances at First Minister's Question Time in the Scottish Parliament. But we saw on her face that I mean, she looked even uh, more upset and <laughs> drawn uh, than Wendy Alexander did. So this is a very traumatic event for Labour at a very difficult period in Labour, Scottish Labour's history there. Uh, the SNP have now been in power for over a year here in a minority administration. They haven't managed to uh, pick any holes in, in Alex Salmon's uh, um, you know, uh, running of the, the country, uh, despite, as we've been hearing, many broken promises from the SNP. They haven't really landed a glove uh, on Alex Salmon yet. 
and uh, it's, it is a, a very difficult situation to see how they're going to resolve it. And given the way she conducted her leadership and the way she tried to move the party in a different direction, uh, did that indicate some sort of split or perhaps even just a little branch away from Westminster? Oh yeah, there was, there was and the background to this has been um, almost warfare between uh, uh, those in the Wendy Alexander camp in Scotland who've been trying to move Labour in a much more federalist direction, looking for more parts of the Scottish Parliament, calling for an independence referendum, and the Scottish Labour MPs in Westminster, who, uh, most of whom are utterly opposed and appalled by the suggestion that Labour should actually be calling for a referendum on independence, which has always been the, the nationalists' uh, policy. So there has been uh, a real breakdown of relations here. Um, at, uh, the, the Prime Minister himself uh, tried to contradict Wendy Alexander over this issue of an independence referendum at First Minister's Question times, t time uh, just about a month ago. Um, and that led to a, a, a clear rift there between Number 10 and the Scottish Labour leadership. So this is a, a, there are multiple divisions here within the Scottish Labour fraternity. And also Labour is in a very difficult situation financially as it is in the entire UK. Its activist base has been eroded in Scotland. It lost most of its councillors, or a very large number of its councillors, um, in the last elections when the SNP took over in Holyrood and drove a swathe to Scottish local authorities. So the Scottish Labour Party is really uh, in a very uh, delicate uh, and traumatised situation just now, and uh, the relations with, with uh, Westminster have been extremely bad. So it's going to be very difficult uh, to envisage somebody uh, taking on from where Wendy Alexander has left off uh, I think the next leader of the Scottish Labour Party will probably be much more inclined towards, uh, if you like, the Westminster line. Uh, and just a final thought, uh, the East Glasgow uh, Labour MP David Marshall is also resigning for health reasons. Is his seat in any danger, would you think? Um, well, I think in the present situation, um, any seat in Scotland is in danger. Um, and uh, I don't know the entire circumstances of David Marshall's circumstances of David Marshall's resignation. We, we, we understand it's principally because of for health reasons. Um, but un, in the present circumstances, I think it's uh, highly possible that uh, the SNP would be able to take this very safe uh, Labour seat, seat. We saw in Crewe and Nantwich, really, that no Labour seat now is safe. Ian McWhorter, thank you very much indeed for that overview. Thank you very much. Let's look at the headlines. The Scottish Labour leader Wendy Alexander has resigned after being found guilty of breaking parliamentary rules on donations. Miss Alexander said there'd been a breach of natural justice and a partisan decision. Votes are still being counted in Zimbabwe's presidential election with Robert Mugabe now certain to win. A foreign observer says the turnout was very, very low. And the government's approach to gun crime has been described as flawed by criminologists. Researchers at King's College London say jailing young offenders is likely to lead to more crime when they are freed. And I do have a little bit more on the uh, information coming out of Harare regarding the elections and the foreign observers now saying that many Zimbabweans voted in fear. There were many spoiled ballots or those who voted for Morgan Changarai, the opposition leader. Uh, Zimbabweans, they're saying, deliberately defaced their ballots to discredit the presidential runoff. Those who did vote voted only out of fear. Uh, the state-run newspaper, The Herald, had reported massive turnouts uh, for the Friday election. Uh, but the head of the Pan-African Parliament Observer Mission said the turnout was very, very low. He said there was a lot of intimidation to make people go and vote. And many of those who did vote did actually cast their ballots for Morgan Changarai, who, of course, pulled out of the race after violence against his party. But his name did still appear on the ballot. As we're telling you, the voting con counting continues, and we'll keep an eye on that situation for you. Let's go back to our main story. Uh, the Labour leader in Scotland, Wendy Alexander, has resigned. She was a close political ally of the Prime Minister, although they did have different views about her decision to challenge the SNP to hold a referendum on independence. Uh, our political correspondent, Alicia McCarthy, has been in the studio with me throughout that statement and the comments we've had afterwards, and particularly those comments now about Labour being left in disarray. Where does that leave Gordon Brown? This is going to be a big blow for Gordon Brown. There's no two ways about it. Wendy Alexander, in her statement there, was saying that the comments about her expenses and